Fish on. <laughs> what we were looking for. We have um, resorted to bluegill fishing because we've been, you know, um, trolling some of my trolling baits in very fast water and not catching anything. So now, got bluegill in the boat. And uh, what are you using, Clint? He's using one inch rainbow trout gulp minnows. Now I'm using night crawlers on a slip bobber rig. Sometimes I wish my camera was a 360 degree camera so you guys could actually see Clint tossing this thing out there. Or at least tossing his bait. But we're just in a kind of a backwater area. The main river is actually it's flowing hard. It's got a lot of current. It is 65 degree water. And this backwater area from it is 79 degree water. I've heard of big bluegill being here before. I'm hoping for bigger bluegill. At least. Because I want to try to striper fish with bluegills. Do something a little bit different than what I've done in the past. I also might use them for flatheads too. That just depends. I do need to um... well to add to the fun of today my battery died right as I was trying to explain our fun day. I don't know where it stopped but I'm gonna say that we were trolling with trolling baits in very fast water trying for drum stripers whatever oh hey <laughs> something ate my worm and we weren't catching anything so we decided to come back here try for some bluegill which may be fished or used in the future for flatheads or even striped bass i do need to update my gear for striped bass if I want to troll live bait for them. But we're seeing some activity here. He missed one off camera. Maybe we can get a couple more bluegill in the boat. I'm trying to catch some fish guys so I don't podcast you to death. But I, I will be doing more podcasts. But on this on this rig, you know it's just a circle hook. I think that's a size four. I think it's kind of big. I might try downsizing, but for now I'm just, I'm going to try to use it until I get like, you know, you know, miss a couple of more fish. I actually have a swivel on here that's acting as a bobber stop. And then I have an actual bobber stop that I can move up and down the line to change my depth. I may add a small sinker on here too, just to drop it down and maybe uh, allow me to see when the bobber actually do something when a fish grabs it since this is the second time I've had my night crawler removed from my hook. So stay tuned. Hopefully we'll catch a couple more bluegill before it gets too dark to film. There we go. Setting the hook like Mike Iaconelli. <laughs> That's a good sized one. I have uh, switched over to what Clint's using. <laughs> Little gulp. I can barely cast it with a six pound line. I need like four or two pound line. Like what he's using. He's using two pound line. Nice bluegill. Ugh. Give you guys a better look at this. Oh, just a trout magnet jig head with a little uh, gulp minnow on it, like uh, this. Gulp alive minnows. 
And Clint has a whole bag of them because this is his go-to bait. Now I've been waiting on somebody to make me a gulp minnow holder for my boat to go in the track system. And if I can actually find someone to make it, <laughs> I'll show it to you guys. Either 3D printing or not. There's one guy that says he was going to just make it out of a CNC machine. But I'd rather have like a 3D printer do it. Just some plastic gulp, you know, gulp uh, container holders that can also go in the track system. But, um, yeah. If you guys know anybody or if any of you have a 3D printer, hit me up and let me know. This would actually be something that I bet would sell. I bet a bunch of different people would buy them for boats if you can make them for both. Oh, wow, look at that. Something going on back there, chasing. That's where I caught that bluegill. <laughs> I probably should have stopped there and cast a few more times. It is getting late, though, and we're trying to hit some spots really quick to see if we can get more fish in the boat. But Clint hasn't even been getting a bite, and I got a... I got hung up and lost my night crawler. I didn't get any more bites on the night crawler. But I did switch to this and as you saw it just caught a bluegill. So uh, at least we're not skunked today. We did catch, we were at a different lake. Uh oh, three foot of water. Anyway, we were at a different lake and we were trolling and as we were leaving it and giving up, I said put one out and at like almost five miles per hour we caught a little bitty bass on one of the trolling baits, which was pretty incredible. Didn't have the camera running obviously because we were leaving and I didn't think we'd catch anything with a bait going five miles per hour. Really interesting stuff. That leads to another question for you guys. I know I'm asking a lot from you. Have you caught fish going that fast, four and a half to five miles per hour on trolling baits or whatever? I'm curious to know. That seems to be really, really fast. You missed something? And Clint just missed something. So just let me know in the comments below. Let's see if we can get a couple more fish in the boat before it gets too dark. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a really, really, really short video. But I am trying to put out content and this has been a really huge failure of a day. I'm going to publish it anyway. Let you guys know I tried. We did catch a bluegill that we can use in the future. Now the way I'm fishing this, casting it out the best I can, and then just Reeling it in really, really slow until something grabs it. And it's probably best to let out as much line as possible. Since it's a six pound line and I should be doing this with less. And fly fishing. <laughs> Actually, that's not fly fishing, but now you really got to give it some oomph to get it out there pretty far. What was that? I think that was a gizzard shad. Oh, hello. <laughs> I was paying attention to Clint who got snagged and something grabbed mine. Open lightning would strike twice. I guess not. Did pull the minnow down a little bit. We are in two and a half foot of water right now too. Really, really shallow. Oh, that was either a really good cast or a really bad cast.
look like the locals on the dock are heading back. This backwater area has a brand new dock. And I don't know who put it here. There's a whole bunch of new homes nearby. And they were catching some nice um, red eye from their dock every now and then. And it's uh, as the sun goes down here, things are not wanting to cooperate. I think that uh, I'm going to cast at least one more time. <laughs> oh, can't even get to that jump. So we're down to like a foot of water right now. I am hearing stuff like hit, but it is getting kind of dark, almost too dark to film. I know my camera picks up the dark pretty well. But I think uh, we're probably going to try this a little bit longer into the dark. And then uh, we'll head back to the ramp. Uh, like I said, it's not been the greatest day. We've been on two different lakes and a river. And I passed passed up a ramp and a river because the ramp was closed. And then when I went up river to one of the more difficult ramps, that ramp uh, was too swift. It was way too swift. It was up. It was muddy. I decided not to try to fish it. I want that particular river to be, you know, a little bit slower and clearer for smallmouth and moon eye. Every time I've went there when the water's been really fast and really muddy, I don't catch anything. So I just, I passed that ramp up. I decided not to try the more difficult ramp. And then I ended up uh, eventually picking up Clint here and we've been lake and river hopping and uh, yeah. It's one of those days, you know, it, you don't always catch fish. My clients that have been in my boat have been incredibly lucky lately because we've been catching a lot of fish. But we're going to a certain spot. That certain spot almost always has fish. And uh, they were okay with mixed bag trips instead of catfishing trips. The catfish are, from what I'm hearing, aren't really biting too well right now. I don't mind doing mixed bag trips. Catch a bunch of drum. Every now and then you get a big striper. We got a really big largemouth, white bass. So it's, a, it's usually a fun trip. You get catfish too, blues and channel catfish. And in my own humble opinion, it's definitely more fun to catch fish after fish, even if it's drum, instead of watching a balloon swim around for like two hours before you actually catch anything. And I've seen that happen a couple of times with the boats that are around me moving away from me because I'm catching fish. Now, as always, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to actually watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. And I am very thankful for the afternoons and the mornings being cooler now. We're hitting 60 to 70 degrees in the morning. We're still hitting like 95 to with 105 like heat rating and after in like in the middle of the day. But summer is almost over and catfishing should catch, you know, start doing better. And hopefully I'll be able to get a big old catfish in the boat sometime in the future, either for one of you guys as a guided trip or as a YouTube video, because it doesn't matter to me. I'd love to get one of you on one or get myself on one for you guys to watch. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you next time.